so nice out. This is, oh, hold on. This is called Glaw. It's time to show them what's happening. You're going down. <sighs> All right, guys, well, today is the day that we spray some paint. Uh, today's probably just gonna be primer, but here's what we got going on. I got a wooden structure made that we're gonna drape plastic over and kind of make a mini paint booth or a makeshift paint booth. I have this tractor, a tractor behind the forklift and the hood of a car to paint. <laughs> so. Um, we're just going to kind of get this done the best that we can. I'm rolling here by myself, so I think it'll be interesting, but we're going to staple, just gently staple the plastic up here to this wooden structure. We're going to get everything draped. And then from there, I think I'm just going to wipe down the tractor, make sure everything's clean. There's not a lot of dust on the floor. I have a exhaust fan with like this big tube and that will be able to exhaust some of the paint dust and air out of there so let's get to it so the plastic i have is it's 10 feet wide by 100 feet long and i figured i'd get that i could split this in half and kind of drape it over every which way i think it'll work just fine Oh boy, I'm not gonna have enough, am I? Cause I gotta drape it this way, which let's call it the long way. Uh, one more time, the long way to cover that half. And then I gotta come down here on the sides. And it don't have to be perfectly tight, but I uh, would really like to keep the paint over spray to a minimum. Let's go over it. I hope this one doesn't break. Now, I need to unfold it as much as I can, and I'm gonna start stapling as I go back and unfold it. I'll put a blocked block in the corner six by six and then just staple it to it that'll kind of hold the corner in place I think we can just run it up on the balcony so I'm just gonna go along and well that's not good I was gonna go along and make this nice and tight but staple it right away. Of course the stapler fell. Wouldn't you know? Left handed. All right now we just got to pull that one over and staple it and we are out of plastic. I'm gonna have to run to the store. Uh, I bought a 10 by 100 like I said before but between the plastic we used for all this I uh, used it for a few other things and didn't realize just how much I actually needed. So, oh well, for the most part, it's buttoned up as far as I can go. But I think when I go back to the store, instead of getting 10 foot stuff, I'll get 12 foot if they make that or 16 because the sides are just over 11 feet. And then instead of making more work cutting it a whole bunch of times, I can just cut it to length once. But there's not much I can do right now, guys. I'm gonna have to go get some plastic, so I guess we'll see you in a little bit.
All right guys, spraying primer is all done. Let's go have a look. Here it is. I sprayed a red oxide primer it was called, and then I ran out of that and I had to just do a flat red primer, which I had. Uh, underestimated how much I was gonna need, but it, it sprayed good. Basically, everything I sandblasted that I, I kind of wanted to get sprayed, I got sprayed. The steps, the steps were really rusty and beat up. The weights, the front end, everything was kind of scratched and rusty and it just wasn't, wasn't looking good. But this is gonna take 24 hours to fully dry before I can put on the black. So maybe tomorrow, if I get some time, we will spray some black. Look at that, it sucks that plastic right in. I'd like for it to stay like right there. I think a bungee cord and something heavy. Perfect. Uh, respirators here, cleaning stuff now, gloss black. I hope I have enough. I only have this and it took two quarts of primer. So maybe I'll reduce this down. Good thing they print that nice and big, huh? One part reducer, two parts paint. Okay, we are loaded up and ready to shoot. Well, I reloaded our paint stash, because like I said before, I grossly underestimated how much paint I was gonna need. But I got stopped at the farm store, got a whole bunch more paint, probably grossly over bought paint at this point, but at least I won't have to stop. Back in the booth to spray some more black. Alright guys, as you can tell, 
I got the tractor out of the paint booth. Uh, this time around though, I covered the floor in plastic. Uh, Ethan and I swept it up. Uh, there's a little bit of paint that I'm gonna have to scrub off this summer, which I was hoping it would come off a little easier, but it didn't, but anyway, we put plastic down, no big deal. Next order of business is to get this little tractor in. Right here, that tractor's gotta get put in there. I got some steel saw horses and steel jack stands that we can put that on. The rims need to be painted. And then there's two front rims up there that need to be painted. And that's gonna be it for that color. So let's get to work. Uh, I need to run and get the forklift from the other shop so that I can move this around and get this tractor set in there nicely. So that's the plan. Also, it's like blowing 30 mile an hour and zero degrees out, so I'm gonna bundle up. It's like the most talked about thing when you meet a stranger in Wisconsin. Hey, you know, how you doing? Ah, the weather is cold out, huh? Yeah. yeah, I hate the cold. Or, you know, summertime. Oh, man, how's it going? Man, am I hot, it's way too hot. <laughs> That's a typical conversation with a stranger you meet in anywhere at a quick trip. I should bring Stevie back, the shop sweeper. Okay, it runs. He's definitely not doing any good sitting in this shop. I'm gonna have to quickly move some of this stuff around before I can get through there with the forklift and the tractor. Well, I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I don't know what I'm gonna do up here with the front. I got the, the back on the jack stands that I would like. Uh, I think I'm gonna have to go find a, some sort of jack stand to put under just the center in the front here. But let's do it the easy way. All right, we're on to the second tractor painting. I see you do a lot of the heartache of the priming and cleaning of that, which took many hours. And we're going to sling some color, so come on with me. Um, this is, oh, hold on. This is called Glo Gloss Massey Ferguson Metallic Flint Gray. That's what we're spraying. So we're just ready to get loaded up. And uh, Vance here, city boy from New York, if you remember him from a few videos back, all the way from Rochester, New York. He loves to help out. He is going to grab a gun. Uh, Cause there's a lot of nooks and crannies in here to paint. Actually, let me just show you.
full? It's pretty full, yeah. All right, I got another cheap, high volume, low pressure gun that I want to get ready to go to mix up so I can help them. You know what, guys? I'm going to go ahead and get this all sprayed up for the most part, and then I'll uh, take you for a little bit tour. All right, paint cleanup is done. The first coat of gold flint metallic, whatever you call it, is on. Let's check it out. Ooh, ah. There you go. That stuff is really fun to shoot. A little difficult because it's a lighter color covering the darker primer, but really kind of neat. Neat color. That's it until the next coat. I think I'll try to do that tomorrow. We'll leave that exhaust fan run for a while and get all that overspray out of there. Uh, that little plastic booth works pretty well. But let's go get washed up. And I got some more work to do. Well, after a little bit of smack talking by the kids, it's time to show them what's happening. You're going down. Let's go. It's Archie and me versus Brady and Augie. Other team's timeout, but I think we're winning. That's it for this one. Thanks for joining me on my little paint booth and painting journey. Hope you guys enjoyed. Until next time, we'll see you later.